So are we at the point in society where we can replace real estate agents with AI agents? This is a question that will inevitably be answered by yes, at least in how real estate agents function today. Just like every other industry, AI is going to enhance and replace certain portions of jobs and real estate agents are not immune to this shift. It'll likely happen gradually. And today I'm gonna to show you one element of what real estate agents do that can be replaced with an AI agent using a program called Vapi AI. I received a lot of comments on my past videos requesting I do a video covering in Vapi, so when they reached out about sponsoring today's video, I knew I had to take them up on it. I'll walk you through exactly how to get Vapi set up and provide all the files and links you need in the video description. I'll help you understand how Vapi works so that you can customize it for your own application. There are literally an infinite number of ways that you can use this for your business or personal life. It really unlocks a lot of possibilities. If you enjoy learning about AI, new technology, and applications for using AI in your life, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you enjoy the video or learned something new, give it a thumbs up. It helps me know what content people enjoy so that I can make more of it. So for today's example, we're gonna make an AI real estate agent that can answer calls from prospective clients and provide detailed information from a file that we upload to the AI agent. If you've seen my previous videos, you know there are a number of great applications for using an AI phone agent. One of the things that makes Vapi's application so cool is the ability to upload files that the AI agent can use. This means you don't need to have a giant prompt for the AI with a bunch of details, and it gives you an easy method that you can update the agent with new information. For our example today, that's gonna be new home inventory. So if you wanna have the latest inventory of homes or products for anyone who calls in, you can simply update the file that the AI phone agent references. Vapi also lets you customize your AI phone agent more than any software that I've seen. It'll integrate with just about any AI program that you'd want to use, including Eleven Labs, OpenAI, Grok, you name it. So to get started, first we need to make the file for our agent to reference. All right, now I have a link to this in the video description, but this is the Excel data that we're gonna use for our, our example today. Uh, you can see I have a header for the MLS number, the address, the city, the number of beds, the number of baths, and then the list price. This file represents all the available homes in Los Angeles for the example today. And I've got, I think 300 homes maybe listed here, um, 317. So each line represents a new home the AI can actually reference this. For this one, I'm gonna actually make this into a PDF. So if you go to file and then download PDF, it'll pop up like this. And you wanna make sure that you freeze the first line because then it'll put it on each page. Like you can see in this print preview here, uh, that'll help the AI know the header of what it's looking at on each page. You know, uh, The other thing is to make sure it's landscape so that it fits all on one page. Um, and then you can adjust some of the formatting and things. So I ended up just including the, the grid lines across um, and then you know you can adjust this as you need once you export that it'll export it as a pdf uh, and then we can open that and it'll look something like this this is 11 pages of new homes for sale in los angeles that our ai agent is going to have knowledge of and be able to answer questions about which is kind of cool so once you have that saved on your computer then we're going to actually go to vapi ai if you go to the video description there's a referral link in there if you click that it helps me out but uh, it'll take you to a page that looks like this and we can go to try for free. You can uh, put in your information, sign up, and once it gets you logged in, you're gonna see a dashboard that looks like this. And you'll see that we don't have any assistance at the moment, uh, and then there's a menu here on the side that has assistance, phone numbers, files, and tools. Um, and then if you hit create assistant, it'll pre-populate with some preloaded agents that they have. We can do an inbound Q&A agent, because for today's example, we're doing a real estate agent that's gonna answer questions for people. So let's click that one and click continue. Uh, next, it'll let you change the voice bot's name. We'll just leave it as Leo. And you'll see that it fills in a bunch of information here about the assistant that we just created. Uh, here at the top, it'll actually tell you the cost of what the assistant will be per minute to use it. Uh, it also shows the latency, which is um, you know how quickly the agent will respond to questions on the phone. Uh, as you make adjustments here it'll show you the impact that it has on your cost per minute and the latency of your of your bot so if you you know have more complex prompts it'll slow it down you can actually see the impact that uh, that some of that's going to have on your latency and then uh, if you put modifications that are going to raise the cost of your agent you'll see that reflected directly in your in your cost here at the top. So that's pretty cool. If we scroll down, you can see we'll get information about the model itself. The first message, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's what we want our agent to say when uh, somebody calls and it answers the phone. Uh, so for this one, I'm gonna say, hi there, I'm Leo with Tech at Work Realty. Uh, how can I help you today? Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then below that, we have the system prompt. For this, I have in the video description 
what I'm gonna put here. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through how I have this set up and why I did what I did for the system prompt. Uh, but go to the video description and just copy and paste the one that I have and then you can modify it for however you wanna use yours for your own example. But I'm gonna actually highlight all of the, that they have here and delete it. And then from the video description, paste the system prompt that I have so that it works with the example that we have here today. Just to kind of briefly walk through this system prompt here, uh, I've got an identity section, a style, and a response guideline. This is all from the VAPI documentation. Uh, if you have more questions or you wanna look at this stuff yourself, if you go here to this little like life raft thing, there's all the documentation and you can click through these and they do a great job of breaking all this stuff down. So you can kind of troubleshoot and uh, figure out what you're trying to get working. So for the identity, I'm just telling the agent what its, uh, what its purpose is to help callers with inquiries about properties. Um, I'm telling you that it's based on a price range, a city location, the number of beds or baths, or a specific MLS number. So these are like the ways that people could ask about information for the properties uh, in the file that we're gonna load into it. Uh, the style, that's just uh, you know telling it to be concise, operate as a voice conversation. The response guidelines, uh, this present the information clearly and understandably, use natural language, blah, 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 blah. Uh, now task and goals. You're gonna have an introduction here, which is greet the caller. It's gonna answer with the first line that we set. Um, and then general information, you're just telling the agent what its general purpose is again. Um, and then this is how it's gonna handle inquiries. It's gonna identify the caller's type of question. So what this prevents is somebody saying, I'm looking for one bath, and it starts looking in the cost section for one bath, for example. So it lets it take whatever the caller's question is and then identify, is this asking about the MLS number? an address, is it asking about a city location, is it asking about price, and then from that it knows which column to start searching so it doesn't get confused on um, the, the context basically. Uh, and then so data search, this is going to search the uploaded file uh, that we load into it, so this is the file name that we have. Uh, this is actually going to be example.pdf, um, and it's going to find matching properties based on what the caller was asking about. I also specify here, which I think is kind of important, each row in the file is a unique property with headers for each column. As you recall, we have our uh, data set up with the, the headers here at the top and then the information below, and each line is a a unique property that the, the person could ask about or that it could answer with. Uh, now I'm going to define the response. So provide the caller with the relevant property details based on the search result and then ask the caller if they need any further assistance or if they have other questions. Next I go into a detailed breakdown which is going to give it an example for how the call should go. This is almost like some training data of how a good conversation would go. So you're going to greet the caller, uh, tell them hello, thanks for calling Tech at Work, uh, how can I help you? Uh, and then provide basic details about the real estate agent. So this is if the person's calling and they wanna know, hey, uh, what are your hours? Or um, what's the phone number or an email that I can reach out to you? So this gives the, the actual real estate agent office hours and information about the office itself. That way the agent can answer questions beyond just what's in the file that's uploaded. Uh, inquiry handling, uh, again, we're just kind of training this to say, look, we're gonna look for the type of query that the caller is asking about. And then this is sort of an example of how it can uh, discern that. So are you looking for properties within a specific price range in a certain city, number of beds and baths, or a specific MLS number? And then I specify the way that it's gonna search the data for the answer. So based on the query, search the relevant fields in the file. Uh, and so then I give an example of each type of header that it could be searching for. So price range. Please tell me the price range you're interested in. Uh, and then it's gonna search the list price column, which is in our data. So that's this here. And it's gonna search for properties within the specified range from the caller. Uh, and then I just do this for each of the different headers. So city location, um, it's gonna search the city column. Uh, how many bedrooms and baths, it'll search the beds and baths column. Um, and then feature search, uh, what specific MLS number are you looking for? And then it's gonna search the MLS columns for that one. So uh, then I specify in the response. So provide the caller with details of the matching properties. Uh, here are the properties that match your criteria. And then I give I know, an example property here with the price. And then I give information about the beds and bath. Would you like to set up a time to view it? I can connect you with one of our esteemed agents. Um, and then it's ask the caller if they need further assistance. And then I give another example of a full conversation going back and forth with the agent and uh, the AI. So yeah, that's the, that's the system prompt. Uh, again, you can copy and paste that into your own and customize it based on what you're trying to do and fill in your own header titles and everything. Uh, but based on the documentation, this is how VAPI wants you to kind of set up the system prompt so that it works smoothly. Beyond that, 
Uh, if you go over here to provider, you can see they have all these different providers that you can use. So like I said, you can use Perplexity, Grok, you know, they integrate with pretty much every major AI provider. So, uh, and then the model, the model here, it defaults to OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can actually use GPT 4.0 now, uh, but if you select that and scroll up, you'll see that your cost per minute is gonna go up. So this is one of those that's kind of unique to VAPI that it'll show you real time uh, what impact some of the settings that you're selecting are going to have. You can see it also slows down our latency a little bit by having that. So um, if we go back and select turbo, uh, that, that really hurt our latency and then uh, put us up to 0.2. So 4.0 actually is cheaper than 4 turbo. So kind of neat. Uh, but again, if we go back to 3.5 turbo, that should be sufficient here. So now the knowledge base. So this is where we have a file that we can upload for the assistance to reference. So we need to actually upload the file so that we can select it here. So you can see we don't have any files here. You can either select it here on the left side where it says files, or we can just click this add a new file right there and it'll take you there. Uh, so click this, find the PDF that we created earlier with all of the listing, with all the properties, with the headers and everything that we formatted and open it and then click upload. And you'll see that it loads in the information here with sort of the you know different information about it. So if you go back to the assistant and scroll down, and now go to knowledge base, you'll see the file that we uploaded uh, from the dropdown and you can select it. So now the agent is gonna reference that file when it's working. Uh, temperature, uh, this is the randomness of the output, uh, pretty standard like temperature control. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at 0.7 here. Uh, max tokens, so this is where you're able to set uh, the number of tokens that the AI agent can produce as an output. Uh, detect emotion, so this is kind of a neat feature that VAPI has. So it will actually determine the emotion of the collar and include that in, as context uh, in its response. So it'll detect if the person is getting angry or if they're happy about what they're hearing, uh, and then it can include that as part of the, uh, the context for its next response. Um, I'm gonna leave that off for now. If we go back up here, we can go to transcriber. This is where you can configure transcription settings for the assistant. Uh, so this is where you'll be able to see like in your call log, the text from the conversation with the caller and the AI agent. So um, it's got DeepGram and Transcriber, we'll leave it at DeepGram. Uh, and then the different languages that they support, uh, it's pretty extensive here. Um, I'm gonna leave it on English. And then model, I'm gonna leave as Nova2, but you can see all the different models that you select from. And then we can go to the voice tab here, and it'll actually let you use uh, custom voices or preloaded voices from pretty much every major AI provider. So if you click this drop down. Uh, you can see it defaults to a zero, but uh, you can use 11 Labs or OpenAI, uh, pretty much any major AI provider, and then just select the voice that you want from that provider. So, uh, you know, if you select 11 Labs here, you can see all the different voices, all the major voices from 11 Labs. So I'm going to leave it set at Azure and Andrew. You can also see the additional configuration. So you can have background noise, which is pretty cool. You could have it so that it's like an office setting in the background. It sounds like people kind of milling about and answering phones and stuff in the background if you want. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as default. Uh, and then you can see they have some other uh, things that you can adjust with the, uh, with the background noises and um, kind of how the, the voice interacts. I'm gonna leave all that as the default setting though. So if you scroll back up, you can go to functions. Uh, for this example, we're not gonna include any functions, but uh, basically this is like the API calls. So you can set up custom API calls to interact with outside software uh, and then have the assistant interact and, and use that. Uh, similar to like some of the other videos I've made, uh, you could use those same like make.com interactions in this section here. If you click advanced, you can see they've got uh, HIPAA compliance, which is uh, pretty cool if you're using this for a healthcare application. Um, and then recording enabled, so this will allow you to listen back to calls that it's having with your customers so you can hear you know what was said and, and how it interacted with your customers. Um, and then pipeline configuration, it's just got some different settings that you can adjust for you know how the AI interacts with the people that it's talking to, like the interruption threshold, um, the delay you know after the person finishes talking to when the AI starts talking. Uh, they also let you modify some of the messaging uh, settings down here. So you could set like what it says. Uh, if you have this set up to handle voicemails, uh, you can have it you know, say whatever you need it to say there. Um, and then what you want it to say at the end of the call. So thanks for reaching out. Uh, I'm gonna say, thanks for reaching out to Tech at Work Realty. Have a good day. Great, so now that we've got all that set up, you can scroll up to the top here and you'll see this publish button. 
And when you press that, it'll save all the settings that you've just set. Now to link external accounts that you have to use them with VAPI, uh, you actually go to your account here and go to provider APIs. And you can see it has all the different voice providers, um, model providers. So this is where you would put in your OpenAI API key that you have. Uh, or Anthropic or whatever you're using, and it'll allow it then to work with VAPI. Once you get your assistant set up, VAPI will actually let you troubleshoot and test your assistant right here from the dashboard. Uh, so you don't have to deal with troubleshooting with your own phone and waiting for it to ring and all that nonsense. So you can actually click talk with Leo here and it'll call your agent and let you see how it's gonna interact. If I click this, it'll say connecting call. Hi there. I'm Leo with Tech at Work Realty. How can I help you today? Uh, yeah, I'm interested in purchasing a home in West Hollywood. Do you have any homes available there? Here are the properties that match your criteria. 1032 North Hayworth Avenue, West Hollywood, one bed, one bath, listed at $499,000. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Uh, yeah, I wanted to see, do you have any homes in um, Bell? The property at 6710 Flora Avenue, Bell, with three beds and one bath, is listed at $699,777. Let me know if you need further assistance. Uh, no, that's all. Thank you. But uh, yeah, so you can see that it referenced the file that we uploaded and found the you know, relevant property based on what I was asking about. Pretty cool. You can obviously use your own file. You could use this for, you know, if you have a product inventory and you want to be able to let consumers call and see what you have in stock. You know, this is just one application for you know, a real estate agent. You can use this for any type of business. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It helps me out a lot. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. I always love hearing from you all. I have all the files and links in the video description, including a referral link to VAPI, so be sure to use that when signing up. Thanks again to VAPI for sponsoring today's video. Uh, that's all for now. Until next time. Thanks.